Shall we start? Okay, uh, this session I'm going to talk about uh, accounting and allowances and how to develop your uh, company's complex strategy for, uh, for the carbon ETS. Um, before we are moving to the topic today, I'm just going to uh, make a very brief introduction about our company. As many of uh, you may, might have already know Bloomberg, which is the uh, world's leading business and financial information provider. And New Energy Finance uh, was actually acquired by Bloomberg in uh, 2009, when the uh, carbon trading is regarded as one of the most prom promising uh, commodity trading business uh, back to uh, 2006 or 2007. Uh, which is even uh, comparable to, to oil and gas tradings uh, in those years. So uh, Bloomberg acquired us. But after the acquisition, actually, uh, as many of you know, the, uh, carbon, ma the carbon market is just kept going down. And so this map shows now our uh, geographic coverage globally. So we have 15 offices around the globe, and uh, in almost all the uh, carbon, market, carbon markets, both uh, existing markets and planned markets, we have our other ground carbon analysts to uh, look at those markets. And I personally uh, am based in Beijing to uh, look after the greater China markets and also uh, other emerging schemes in Asia. So who we serve? Uh, we have over 700 leading um, players for as our clients globally. Um, well, four groups of our clients are government and international organizations, and also the supply chain companies, and also uh, investors, and utilities and energy companies. And actually, over half of the, um, the BPM automation team to Shanghai uh, are, are, have already been our clients. So this is uh, what we cover in our uh, daily research. Um, the reason why um, we, we, we don't just do a carbon research is because we can't really do anything uh, purely for carbon without understanding the renewable market, uh, without understanding the, uh, the power market reforms, or the, uh, the energy efficiency technologies, which we call energy smart technologies. So we look at the whole picture of the energy transformation globally. Okay, um, let's move to the topic today, accounting. Well, as I know, uh, Shanghai is actually as close to uh, complete its allocation. So I believe many of you have done the uh, the data collection, the, the, the calculation, and also we define the emission scope for different sectors, um, define the, uh, the detailed boundaries of, uh, of different uh, emission sources. And what I want to uh, talk about a bit uh, here is the, uh, the reasons why we do carbon counting and carbon reporting. Um, actually, um, especially in China, I think more and more investors are increasingly concerned about the climate risks associated with their uh, investment portfolios and especially uh, air pollution risks in, 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 in Beijing because I, I, I come from Beijing. So, um, it, it, you know, we can also see a trend um, in the market that more and more uh, exchanges are actually um, put more mandatory requirements for the uh, for the listed for the listed companies to uh, report and disclose the carbon uh, exposure. For example, uh, London has regulated it, all its listed companies to report its uh, carbon emissions in their uh, annual reports. And as far as I know, Hong Kong Stock Exchange has also done some researches on that. And as Shanghai is on its way to the uh, global financial sector, I believe in the foreseeable future, we can also say um, similar regulations in place for the Shanghai listed companies. 
So, um, I would say accounting is a base for uh, allowance allocation from the perspective of policy makers and market regulators, and also for, from the perspective of uh, covered companies, it's also the base for uh, allowance management. Then, what is allowance management? I just uh, listed some of the key words here, like market horizon, uh, that is how far into the future you can, uh, you, need, you need to take into account in your uh, ec economic decisions, and also uh, policy uncertainty, I personally think which is one of the most uh, disruptive factor in driving the carbon prices, and also cost pass through, which means um, how much you can pass through your carbon costs to the end consumers. And again, uh, this is quite a big issue in China, and uh, you can you can you can do the allowance management by um, by having the long term investment planning or taking uh, some hedging positions or doing uh, speculation tradings. But all those um, all the different kind of companies will uh, need to forecast their liabilities, and I call it Han uh, Jai here. Um, so, um, what options are available for you to do the allowance management? As uh, Francisco mentioned before the launch, um, you, you can either buy the allowances from your counterparties and you can get free allocations from the government, or you can uh, also buy offsets from the, uh, the offset scheme, like, uh, like, like CCERs in China. And in the long run, you can also do uh, a bit do some abatement investments, either uh, in terms of the operational abatement or uh, some uh, abatement technology investment. So all that you need to do is to um, make full use of those uh, compliance options and to minimize your um, carbon compliance costs. But as mentioned many times this morning, what is the really critical part is how do you see your, uh, how do you see the market pricing trends, and how do you see your uh, your, your your own uh, carbon uh, carbon inventories and carbon liabilities. So, in the next session, we are going to talk about the uh, factors that influence the carbon price. Okay, uh, this chart shows the uh, ICEZ. Uh, it actually, the EUA prices for um, December 13th. It's starting from May 2012 and uh, ends in the end of last uh, Thursday. I just take this snapshot for for your reference. And as you can see, it's quite volatile actually, uh, like many other uh, securities or commodity tradings. So, what really drives the carbon pricing movement? Here I listed a lot of factors, but I'm afraid I can't uh, explain this uh, one by one uh, in just a couple of, few, uh, couple of minutes. So uh, I like to just put it this way. Um, as a market-based mechanism, the pricing is basically determined by supply and demand. On the supply side, you can, um, you can look at the allowances uh, you got from free allocation, you can look at the auctions uh, that are going to uh, have more allowances coming to the market, and you can also um, look at how much offsets are available in the current project pipeline. And on the demand side, uh, first you need to know obviously the, uh, your caps or carbon test reduction targets, and also uh, you need to know your actual emissions and the difference between your actual emissions and the uh, and your carbon caps is the net abatement demand uh, you require to achieve for compliance. So, what are the impacts of carbon pricing on different companies? Here, I take the example of a, a utility company. Uh, it's actually quite straightforward, actually. Um, if you got more clean portfolios like nuclear or solar or wind projects, 
then you will be less sensitive to the carbon pricing than those companies with more uh, copeland. And if you got more uh, carbon intensive thermal plants, then the prices tend to you know, devalue these assets and narrow your uh, profit margins. And what the carbon pricing um, impacts on your business operations? Well, in the short term, uh, as a utility company, you have to, you, you may need to um, change your dispatching order based on the uh, carbon pricing moments, or uh, if you want to go to the public markets to uh, raise additional uh, capital, then the investors may also uh, require additional risk premiums specifically for your uh, carbon exposure. So those are the uh, impacts on the business operations. Then how companies should be um, should respond to those carbon pricing uncertainty? Then um, uh, uh, this is quite depends on the um, um, what time horizons are you look are you looking at? So in the short term, uh, for example, next five to ten days, uh, you can you can be more active in trades or uh, taking any hedging positions uh, to hedge the pricing risks. And in the medium term to long term. Uh, you need to do some uh, structured investment, for example, uh, to uh, you know to, to add more uh, energy efficiency technologies or install a, a carbon capture facility at your plant. Then for the carbon marketing planning for uh, for the Shanghai uh, pilot trading companies, uh, well, I, I personally was just. What we can do right now is to to be more active in the in the in the regulation development process as well as in the in the pilot trainings. Okay, and this is how we do the carbon market insight uh, research. Uh, it's basically uh, responding to the different time horizons. As you can see, uh, all of the forecast outputs are actually around the pricing forecast in our services. So, um, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to talk about uh, talk, talk something about the uh, carbon pricing methodologies. In the short term, actually, it's um, like the security trading and other commodity trading. It's quite uncertain um, for the for the intraday pricing movements. Actually, so uh, we what we can do is to uh, identify the most uh, correlated factors in the short term with the carbon pricing movements. For example, in the EU ETS, we look at the, uh, the stock indexes like the, um, the, 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 the Germany uh, stock index and also the, um, and also the, London, uh, the London stock indexes. And uh, other than the economic indicators, we also look at the fuel prices movements and also the, uh, the spark and the dark spreads and also uh, like the fuel switching costs. And also sometimes we look at the, the, the exchange rates. So in the main term, uh, it becomes uh, a little bit more uh, predictable actually. So we look at the market fundamentals by analyzing the demand and the supplies and we get the net abatement demand and also the prices required to hit the balance. And in the longer term, uh, other than the supply and demand, as I uh, listed here, uh, the long-term carbon pricing will be defined by the marginal abatement cost curve. So uh, I'm going to introduce the MAC curve in more details in the uh, next session. Okay, um, then we are going to talk about how to develop your own uh, company strategy. We will take the China power sector uh, as an example here. The methodology. We use uh, our global energy and emission model, we call it GEM, to uh, produce the carbon uh, market fundamentals forecast as well as the pricing forecast. So here are the key assumptions in our analysis. We, um, I'll, I'll just pick, uh, pick up some of the key assumptions 
Uh, we assume the trading scheme will start in 2017, and we assume the 2030 carbon tax reduction target of 55% against 2005 levels, and uh, we just include uh, CO2 emissions, and we, we also uh, limit the offset import at 10% of the uh, total uh, compliance obligations. So, with those assumptions, we can get the abatement demand. So under the 55% of uh, carbon intensity reduction targets here, we can get the annual uh, abatement demand in each of these years, from 2017 to 2030. And how we can achieve those abatement demand? We look at this by building the uh, marginal abatement cost curve. So this is what we did uh, uh, two months ago for the China power sector. As we can see, under the annual abatement demand in 2030, which is about three, uh, 300 and 316 tons, a million tons of CO2. Then we can see the carbon pricing here, which is defined by the uh, solar PV projects in the very upper regions. And actually, this is, I think the, uh, the marginal abatement cost curve is, is crucial in planning our compliance structure on both uh, the, the, the company level and also the uh, the regional level. Actually, two major takeaways from this chart is uh, let's look at the x axis. If you want to take uh, different levels of, of abatement or under different uh, requirements of abatement demand, which technologies are economically available to you to take? And another thing is under different pricing levels in the market, what actions should you take? This, this is for uh, relatively for the long term, but it is also uh, useful for you to take some uh, short term positions. And this is actually also extremely important for, uh, for policy makers and market regulators because you can, doing the, uh, you can get the, the starting carbon price when the pilot trading really kicks off. Which, uh, I remember in Shenzhen there was 30 yuan per ton of CO2, but uh, everybody just uh, curious about how the pricing uh, or, or what came out. And if you're doing the marginal abatement cost analysis for each single year over 2017 to 2030, then you can get carbon pricing forecast. Uh, this is what we did for China's power sector. Um, as you can see from 2017, we can see a price around uh, 40 yuan, and uh, by 2030, it will increase to over uh, 170 yuan per ton of CO2. So the carbon trading will actually have significant impacts on your business operations on the company level, and also will have um, very, um, we say, uh, profound impacts on the sector development. As you can say, uh, with the carbon price introduced, we can see more uh, coal plants will be uh, will be reduced or cancelled, actually, and uh, more renewable projects will be built out, like solar utility and solar uh, distributed projects. And it will also have impacts on the generation and capacity mix. We can say um, this is a scenario without carbon ETS, and this is the uh, scenario with the carbon ETS. You can say the coal generation, the, sorry, the coal capacity installation is actually uh, was reduced by five uh, by five percent from forty three percent to thirty eight percent. And also, this will be reflected in the uh, generation mix. And this will, will also have impacts on the power sector investments, uh, on both the 
uh, generation of east side and also the uh, the grid side, the, the power infrastructure sector. And also with the uh, emission trading scheme, we will see the uh, it will change the emission profile. This is our base case scenario, which we think is most likely to happen in the uh, next two decades. And in this case, we can say the carbon peak will come in 2027 for uh, for the power sector. And with more aggressive um, supporting policies for renewable energy, we can see the, um, the, the, the total emissions will come a little bit down, about 4% in 20, uh, 2027, but the peak will still uh, at in 2027. However, if we introduce emission trading scheme, we can see the carbon peak of the uh, China power sector will, will be the last four years to 2023. And this is a quite significant result, actually. So what I want to say is that um, we, we just take the power sector example. But this is actually can be done either on the regional level, like the Shanghai pilot, or the national level, like how uh, you, you, you are going to say the pricing, the current pricing, if there is a nationwide market was introduced in, in, in the next five years. Or uh, it is also uh, workable on the company level, um, not only for power sector, but also for petrochemical, for glass, for cement. You can also do do do, do the um, do the macro analysis and to get the the, the right abatement path for you, which can uh, help you meet the uh, compliance requirements in the most uh, economic way. So uh, I guess that's it for my presentation and. Uh, I hope all of you uh, good luck with the pilot trainings. Thank you.